I'm going to um, just take any rotation here and I'm going to show you how to get the brushes in there that are new. So if we are in our map pattern file and if we go to brushes, unfortunately our bristle brushes are not popping up. So what I did to perhaps bring these back in there, I would kind of trick it. Um, well, first of all, let's get the template layer off and go to clip elements. So once we are in there, then I just go ahead and create a new document. So file new. Once you are in your file new and then go to brushes, window brushes, you can see that I now have my bristle brush. So I'll just take my brush and I click on the bristle brush and then I just draw any old line with that. Once I have that, I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go to edit copy or the shortcut, then go to my map pattern file. Make sure the clipped element is highlighted and then I can just go ahead and paste. So edit paste. And as soon as I do that, even though you don't see the line, but you can pull it inside of this clipped box right here. But the mo most important part is that now we actually have the brush inside of our brush palette or window. Um, I can now drag this brush onto my create new brush button. And each time I go onto one of these brushes and double click on it, I can then change to a different brush and I just say apply to stroke, doesn't really matter. So all I want to do at this point is have different options, apply or leave. So you can do as many of those as you want by just dragging it onto a new brush. And I think four is enough. Um, whichever brush I want to use, I click on it. I go to my brush. I change the color from my stroke. So under window, swatch libraries. If I go to nature and then flowers, I'm just going to pick one of these folders and drag it into my swatches, close it out. And then let's just say we'll, um, first of all, I'm going to put a background color. So just put a big box. And what I like to do once I have my background color, just go to object lock selection. That way I don't mistakenly activate it anymore. I'm just going to click on this and bring it to front with my shortcut. I'm going to go ahead and click on a different brush right now. Pick a color from my palette here and I'm going to focus and zoom in a little bit on this little cutting area and then just, you know, you can change your colors and you can change your size through stroke. So colors from swatch, but make sure it's your stroke and then just draw anything you'd like. And you can see how it repeats right away. You can make it bigger. And then you can see how when I draw something really big, how it reveals my repeat, if it kind of goes over two of these areas. So a good idea is to perhaps kind of work in segments and just kind of come from one side and then see how you like that. And just change the color, maybe change the brush. Same, change the brush size. And I might delete this one. So with your direct selection tool, you can just click on anything and change it, obviously, in shape and size. And you can obviously combine any of your drawing tools, whether you want to put any shapes in there. If you want to trace something, use your blob brush tool, which I like a lot. And you can also put transparency in any of these and just kind of have fun with this. Okay. All right, so a lot of times you get stuck because everything is selected. So just press Command Shift A to deselect or Control Shift A or in your select, you just click on deselect and then you'll have an easier time to keep working 
with new colors. Maybe add some more interest. So really, really just you know, have some fun with this and whenever you are getting stuck drawing something that you didn't want there, just take your direct selection tool and kind of try to separate things out. Or if you want to change the order of things, take your direct selection tool and then go to object, arrange, and obviously when you have a background color, be careful when you say send to back because it's going to go behind that. Um, then you would have to unlock the background and then click on the background and send that behind what you just kind of lost behind that. This for now is kind of okay just to finish this demo. So I'm going to go ahead and follow the rest of the instructions. So if you're not sure, just zoom out so you can read over them. And once again, it says to use your artboard tool. I'm going to just click on artboard two here. That's my repeat area. Then I'm going to go to file save for web and devices. It's going to show you the repeat. If there's anything white or big or empty around it, then that's not really the right way. You might have to go back a couple of steps and make sure that you are following the instructions or to just start from scratch. But this is my artboard tool only. So I'm going to go ahead and say save. And I'm going to just say this is my test repeat two. Go ahead and save that and replace that. Once again, I can just go to file open, open my test repeat two and then drag it into my swatches and then test this along any of my objects as the fill position. And you can see that the lines that we've had in our test, sometimes we see these lines and it looks as if there's a gap or something. They really don't show up once we have it inside of our swatches. All right, so let's move on to create some of these seamless tiles with pixels. And then obviously in the future, we'll have some videos on how to use them in your flat sketches and then how to create multiple colorways in Illustrator and also how to create multiple colorways in Photoshop and how to use it in a combination with Photoshop.